moving. So he's moving stuff that the body don't need. Is it, it pull up to the to the door and say, I got a shipment, and, and they drop the shipment off. They say, but hold on, hallelujah, I, I'm gonna take this, but can you bring this back to the lung? And so it's bringing carbon dioxide back. Isn't that a miracle? And they think that they say we evolved, they say we just happened. They say that nature, Mother Nature created us. It was the Most High who created us. And we thank you that on this morning, God, you heard us say that we belong to you, God. During this season, you looked up this morning and said, it is my people. They up early this morning. <laughs> they in my house this morning. And they celebrate me during their holy days. God, we thank you for this first fruit of the Feast of Tabernacles, God. We thank you for this small country of people, God, this intimate group who've joined here together like the founding forefathers of America, but the founding fathers, God, of our hallelujah, our revival in these United States. God, we give you praise, God, that we are the remnant. We praise you, God. That we are the beginning, God, of something special in the earth, Father God. We are our days, Father God. Hallelujah, George Washington's and Thomas Jefferson's, God. But we're not doing it for a nation of Europeans, God. We're doing it for a nation of the Hebrew people, God. We love you. We praise you. We give you glory, God. We are back, and Father, we pray in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach that, God, we would remember years to come our first tabernacles, God, that we'll be walking around saying, were you there in Lafayette in 2023 when we did our first tabernacle, when we met him again for the first time, God, in our denomination. I thank you, God, you've chosen us, this group, to be a special group, God, to provide this first offering, this first fruit. And we declare, O oh Yahweh, we declare that us, our children, and everything we are, we belong to you again. We don't belong to Caesar. We don't belong to America. We don't even belong to to this world, we belong to you, O King, and we yield ourselves to you. And we pray this morning in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach that as we get together, that you would be glorified, that you'd be glorified in every single thing that we do. And we pray that those who are here would get a special blessing, God, an infusion of health and youth, God, an infusion, God, that you would add to every one of our calendars 10, 15, 20 years just for being here, O King, in your presence, in the name of Yahshua Hamashi. And we pray, O King, in Jesus' name, that healing would go forth this morning in this very room, that it would move out like a fog, like a Shekinah, that you would arise upon your people once again and that you would have healing in your wings this morning, God. That you would work a work, though if somebody told us, God, we would not believe it, O King. So we pray, O Daddy, that you would heal minds, that you would heal organs, that you would heal blood, that you would heal bones, that you would heal ligaments, God, that you would heal eyes and ears, God, that you would heal mouth issues, God, that gums and teeth, Father God, that you would heal, Father God, hallelujah, God, all of our hormonal systems, God, our respiratory systems, God, that you would heal, God, that God, in the name of Yahshua, a virtue, God, would rise up out this very ground, rise up out this very dirt, God, through the foundation, God, making a connection, a link with your people, King, and healing them, O oh Daddy, of all of our diseases. You are not only the God that forgiveth all of our iniquities, but you heal all of our diseases, King. 
So with your blood and by your stripes, begin to heal, God. Begin to heal, God. Begin to heal, God. Begin to bless, God. Begin to feel, God. In the mighty name of Yahshua HaMashiach. In the mighty name of Yahshua HaMashiach. Bless us this morning. Hallelujah. Bless us this morning, God. We the healing anointing in this place. Hallelujah. This is going to sound strange, but I'm going to say it anyway. Amen. If, if you're able, hallelujah, find you a spot, amen, and, and either, either with your hands or, or with your feet. I know I'm after trouble putting these shoes back on when I preach, but, but even with your hands or with your feet, just, just make a connection with the ground right now. Just make a connection with the ground. You could just move around and, and with your hands or with your feet. And, and if you just got to bend down and just kind of touch, or if you, gotta, if you got an opportunity to take off those sandals, those shoes right quick. And listen, we ain't going to judge nobody, amen. Your socks don't match, but we ain't going to judge nobody. But just make a connection, amen. Hallelujah. I see some people laying out even. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I heard a... Heard an old wise man say one time that, hallelujah, every electrical system, every electrical system has to be grounded, has to be grounded. Those of us that understand electricity understand that every system has to be grounded. In every box that you open, there is a ground wire. That's that green wire. It's got to be grounded. Amen. Amen. And the earth is very important to electrical systems and how they run and how they operate. What most people don't understand is that the human body is an electrical system. <laughs> and we forgot how to stay grounded. We don't even touch the ground no more. We don't touch the earth anymore. Because of technology and our different shoes and all kinds of things that we wear, amen, we never get an opportunity to connect back to the ground that we come from. And right now, we're just going to connect right now. We're going to ask Abba to send current through the earth right now. We're going to ask Abba to send a healing current in the earth right now to regulate. Hallelujah, our systems, to get everything back on track. You see, sometimes things be off because we ain't been grounded in a long time. So God, right now we pray like the virtue went out of your garment, God. That virtue right now, God, would go from heaven to earth right now and begin to rise up even under this building, God. Rise up through the concrete and the foundation, Daddy. And rise up into your people, into their hands, into their feet, into their bloodstream, into their bones, into their back, God. I pray that cartilage we begin to heal up, that ligaments we begin to heal up. I pray that endorphins and hormones would regulate, God. Things we used to take medicine for would begin to normalize. I pray the high things would get back low and the low things would get back high. God, in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach. We touch the hem of your garment right now. The heaven is the Lord's. That's why his throne is. But the earth is his what? Is his footstool. We touch what your foot is on right now. And in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach, as we touch the hem of your garment, your footstool, let power go out. Let power go out. Let healing go out. You say healing is the children's bread this morning. Ha! Give your children that healing bread. Ha! Restore the youth like the eagles this morning. As we've come here from miles away, God, we pray right now, hallelujah, that you'd begin to heal, God. All of our diseases, God. Ooh, ooh, heal, God. Heal the blood, God. Heal the blood, God. High blood pressure regulating right now. Hallelujah. Pancreas getting back on track right now in the name of Jesus. Woo, ha. Lungs getting open right now in the name of Jesus. We rebuke long COVID in the name of Jesus right now. Hallelujah, God.
abnormal cells getting normal right now. We rebuke cancer in the name of Jesus right now. We rebuke diabetes right now in the name of Jesus. Let the power flow, God. Ground us again. Let it flow through our bodies, Daddy. Father, we promise that's when it all said and done and we go back to our houses feeling a little better, minds operating a little better, memory operating a little better, Woo! that we're going to remember to stay grounded, God. And we're going to remember your power you released upon us during tabernacles. We thank you for it now. And we pray all these things and give you glory for it. In Yahshua, Jesus' name we pray. And the Hebrew church say, amen, amen, amen. Come on, give him praise in this house. Woo! Give him praise in this house. Hallelujah. You got to stay grounded. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Most High. Thank you, Most High. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to the Most High God. I don't know about y'all, but I felt something while I was down there. I don't know about y'all, but I felt something when I was down there. I don't know about y'all. Hallelujah. But Chesterfield know what I'm talking about. He, he made a He got comfortable down there. Ooh, not just my hands and my feet, Lord. My, woo. Come on. Let your power run through my whole body, Lord. Hallelujah. We, we done forgot how to be grounded. So every now and then at your homes, amen, take off your shoes, amen. And some of y'all got, got, got green grass out there. Got y'all, take off your shoes and walk in the cool of the day. And ask God, God, send your power. Send your power. Hallelujah, send your power right up out that ground into my limbs, into my limbs. We don't plug in no more from the dust from which we came. Hallelujah. Come on, give y'all some praise in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the Most High God. Y'all, if you have your Bibles, amen, we're going to be looking at uh, the book of Leviticus and uh, boy, how about that worship team, huh? That worship team was amazing. That, hallelujah. I'm telling you, man, hallelujah. They, they put a, that was, that was awesome. Just with a guitar. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Y'all stop by the house in the morning. We could do this in the morning sometime. Hallelujah. Come on, first lady. Let's get our praise on. Amen. And Minister Brian not only threw a mean fade and a mean razor line because he cut my hair and everything. Amen. Just serving the Lord always. Appreciate you, minister. Love you so much. Amen. But he do a great job with that worship team. Amen. Hallelujah. So, y'all, it's going to be a great day today. Amen. It's Saturday. Amen. And uh, uh, my job is to, is to kind of set the tone this morning. And I'm sorry? It's Friday. Yeah, that ground put something in me. I'm sorry. I'm... Hey! <laughs> Hallelujah. So, it's Friday. And uh, we got to line up for y'all. And so my job is to kind of open up, amen. And, and then we're going to do some breakout sessions. And we got some things, amen, that's in the, in the foyer. And, and uh, just relax and, and have a great time, amen. And people going to be coming in and out. Uh, some had to work and some dropped their kids to school. But a time is going to come when we're going to realize that if we could take off for their holidays, we could take off for ours. And if our children don't go to school on their holidays, they cannot go to school for our We don't send our children for school, to school for Mardi Gras. What about the Feast of Tabernacles? Keep them children home, but, but it's all right. Don't despise meager beginnings. We're going to be here year in, year out. And one day, the Hebrew children are going to be here, sitting amongst us. During Tabernacle. Come on, give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Woo. Woo. And so, yeah, so it's Friday. I'm going to open up and I'm going to do our thing. And then after we leave, leave here, remember the campout's going to be getting going. 
Hallelujah. You make your way over there. Amen. As time would afford you. Hallelujah. Phil's going to have some stuff going on all day. Amen. So make your way there. Hallelujah. And uh, it's going to be an awesome day in the Lord as we gather together. First lady, you had anything? You want to come up? You want to say anything? You... Okay. Okay. Wow, they're going to start a bid more, huh? I'm just joking, I'm just joking. She's going to decide some kind of way. Anything else, beautiful? All right, all right. That. Yes, after our class, there's some sessions. And you don't want to miss that. You don't want to miss that. There's some, there's some, there's some anointings that's going to be loose, amen, uh, in these classes. And so after I'm done, amen, go to the classes. Hallelujah. And it's going to be sessions going on simultaneously. All right, all right, and so that's going to be such a blessing. I can already see some husbands and wives saying, look, you go to this one, I'm going to go to this one, take, I'm going to take notes, you know, or uh, uh, hallelujah, different families going to hook up and say, me and my wife are going to go here, you and your wife go there, but take notes, amen, and it's going to be a, a special time, amen. So let's begin. Leviticus 17, 11 is our scripture, amen. So let's just, let's just read that. It's just a small little text, amen. It says, for the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that make it an atonement for the soul. Most high God bless us as we talk about one of the best gifts that you've given us individually and as a church, and as a people, as we talk about the blood, the very blood that runs through our bodies even now, give us wisdom, revelation, discernment, enlightenment, that a spirit that was on Solomon descend upon this place, God, the spirit of wisdom that was on him, God. And we pray in the name of Jesus, God, that the Holy Ghost to take everything that we learn and apply it so that we can live long lives for you, O King. And we just thank you for tabernacle. In Yahshua, Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, give him praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, all right, saints. Feel like I'm forgetting something, but I just, I just need to go in. All right, all right. If you, you think of something, remind me. All right, you... Oh, <laughs> now, I wasn't going to say that, but <laughs> you got me on now. So praise the Lord, get to celebrate tabernacles uh, along with my birthday. And so we give amen. God the glory for that. Amen. And it's not just mine. When y'all see uh, Big John, Big John's birthday is October 7th. If you see my brother, amen, Keith, his birthday is October 7th. Yeah, my brother, he was mad when I was born, y'all. <laughs> He's not so mad right now, you know, it kind of, it's kind of working out. And then also uh, Tony, um, Tony um, Celestine. Celestine, yeah, 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 her birthday, amen, I thought I heard some. Her birthday, amen, is, uh, is October 7th as well. And so any other October 7th in the house, amen. We have one, Wow, okay, okay, y'all son, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Brother Keith, what you got? You know, that's a great day, Brother Keith. It's just, you know, if I had to pick a day in the year, amen, hallelujah. And so, uh, happy birthday. We also got people from all over the place. And as y'all move around, amen, talk and meet, and it's going to encourage you, amen. We got Brother Israel, Alaska in the house, all the way from Alaska, y'all. Hallelujah. Praise God. We talked about you last night. I know your ears was burning. The Tebow house was talking about you, man, and... Hallelujah. We, I mean, listen, man, like Brother Keith, where, where are you from? Indiana, Brother Keith? In, Indiana, amen. We got, hallelujah, Nor, Noriega from Baltimore, Maryland area, amen. Just, hallelujah, we got Dallas in the house. I'm seeing, I'm looking around. It's just such a blessing, y'all, such a blessing. Hallelujah. What, New York, right? Yes, New York is in the house. Hallelujah. Give, you, give God praise for you, my brother. I knew when I saw you, amen, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Any other states, amen? 
D.C. in the house. Atlanta is in the house. Hallelujah. Any other states in the house? North Carolina, North Carolina is in the house. How y'all say it? North Carolina. Y'all in the house? Anybody else, huh? Tennessee is in the house. Hallelujah, y'all. We the, we the first fruits. Did I miss a state? Don't say Louisiana. Virginia. Virginia is in the house. You know, be, let's be excited, y'all, because he's doing something great. Amen. He's doing something great. Hallelujah. All right. Did I forget any state before I move on? All right. So amen. So we got it going on. Hallelujah. So first lady, yeah, you're right. You got me. I'm going to get you for your birthday. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. So in Leviticus 17, 11, amen, we're going to talk about, hallelujah, the title of the message is the blood, amen. We're going to talk about the blood, and we're going to kind of go deep physiologically, amen, a little bit, as deep as I can go, amen. Um, and so we'll talk about it a little bit. Um, in 1657, um, a guy by the name of William Harvey um, discovered Amen. And we, we like, they like to discover things that's been here for a long time. And so he, he discovered uh, the circulatory system and the importance of the blood. 1657. All right. Until then, in the European world, no one knew uh, exactly what the blood was for. All right. And so they used to do all kinds of chaotic things trying to treat people because they just didn't know how important the blood was and what it meant. And so they was treating people by letting blood out. You, know, you bleed out, you know what I'm saying? And so, hallelujah, uh, they didn't know uh, that it was a circulatory system and that uh, one of the important things about it is, it is that it should stay in your body. You understand what I'm saying? And so, um, so 1657 is when the European world figured out the importance of the blood. That's 1,657 years after Christ, all right? But God told us in his word, hallelujah, through Moses, not at Christ, which would be 1,657 years before they caught the revelation. He told us during Moses, all right, during Moses, which was 1500 B.C. approximately. So we're looking at 3,000 plus years of them not knowing how important the blood is. God telling his people how important the blood is. He told us through Moses that the life of the flesh is in the blood. Come on, give y'all some praise up in there. It, it took science 3,000 years to catch up what God said in the very beginning. And that's just recorded 3,000 years. He might have had been spoke that to Noah, been illustrated that to Adam in the garden, huh? When he slew those animals to cover us, huh? And so our God, hallelujah, is way ahead of this world system, the academics, amen, everything else. Don't stick with science, stick with God. Come on, give him some praise up in here. All right? The life is in the blood, all right? Now, in the early 1900s, Alexis Carroll said that most causes of death are due to some alteration in the makeup, in the combination of uh, the blood, all right? Said that in the early 1900s. And, and today, 2023, we're seeing that one of the leading causes of death around the world and especially in our people, it's got to do with blood. It's the cardiovascular system, heart disease. You know what I'm saying? It's got to do with the blood. The leading cause of death, amen, in the world, the life is in the blood. And so this morning, amen, for the time that I have allotted, we're going to talk about the importance of the blood. And then we're going to talk about if it's so important, then how should we take care of our blood. Anybody hear me up in here? All right. And I'm going to kind of give a precursor. But as as y'all go to these classes, amen. Hallelujah. And who's doing these classes? We got Doc doing the class. We got we got Minister Frankie. Amen. And so so as you go to these classes, they're going to help you even more. They're going to fine tune 
some of the broad strokes, they're going to, they go, they go, hallelujah, uh, add some detail, amen, to the broad strokes that pastor is going to paint this morning. But don't miss it because life is where? Is in the blood. All right. So let's talk about the importance of the blood. As we think about the blood, the first thing we need to mention is, is that the blood is important because it carries food and oxygen to the whole body. It carries food and oxygen to the whole body. All organs in our body, you know, all organs, every organ that's important to the body, huh? Uh, uh, Every tissue, all your muscles. Uh, uh, in fact, every cell gets the food that it needs from the bloodstream. All right? The bloodstream. If you could think about the bloodstream as a highway, all right? And, 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 and your body as a, as a country. If, if the trucks and the trains and the transportation system would shut down, huh? Our commerce would shut down, the economy would shut down, the country would shut down. Because the highways and byways are bringing supplies to the important sectors of our nation. Do we get that so far? All right? The bloodstream is the highways of the body under the skin. And it's dropping and it's delivering important things to every organ all of our tissues, amen, and all of our cells, every cell, every cell, all right? If ever that blood don't reach a certain part of your body, that part of the body begins to die. Ooh. Because life is where? It's in the blood. It's delivering food and oxygen. There's a special uh, uh, thing that's in the blood called plasma. Somebody say plasma. All right. And we had a, a, a famous black doctor in 1904 who did some plasma work, Dr. Charles Richard Drew. He did some awesome uh, uh, work on plasma. Amen. His work was so good on plasma that all of the modern blood banks in America operate on the same principles of Dr. Drew. He started the blood storage system that done saved countless lives in the world. Come on, give y'all some praise up in here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Our people been knowing about the importance of the blood. Well, plasma, hallelujah, is how the blood picks up uh, a food from the digestive tract and carries that food to every part of the body. Huh? Hallelujah. There is life in the blood. Not only that, hallelujah, oxygen is also given to the body through the blood. Uh, uh, it is the red blood cells in our blood that have a special thing in them called hemoglobin. You ever heard that before? They talk about your hemoglobin. huh? huh? That hemoglobin is something that's in the red blood cells. All right. And that hemoglobin has an affinity to oxygen. Wherever oxygen is, hemoglobin snatches it. It grabs it and it holds on to it. And hemoglobin is so good, miraculously, at holding on to oxygen, it can hold on to four times as much oxygen as its size is. You know how we bewildered by ants, how they could carry things that's more than their weight? Well, the hemoglobin can carry oxygen more than its actual size. And it brings that oxygen to every part of your body. Not only does the body have to eat, every cell, every tissue, every organ has got to get food to grow and to maintain life, but every cell, every tissue, every organ has to breathe. It has to have oxygen, huh? And that oxygen is brought not by anything else, but the blood. Come on, give y'all some praise up in here, huh? And I'm just, listen, this is, this is a refresher course, a biology course, amen? Because we're talking about the importance of the blood. And what happens is the heart, the heart pushes the blood into the lungs. When it gets into the lungs, we inhale. When we inhale, the lungs take that oxygen and the blood snatches that oxygen from the lungs, attach it to the, the, the bags called hemoglobin and runs through the whole body with that oxygen and just begin to pass out breath huh, 
to every single muscle and tissue is your breath in our lungs. Come on, give y'all some praise. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's the way the blood works. And we'll talk later because half of your blood is either in your lungs or half of your blood is in your lungs or in your, lung, or in your liver. All right. The other half is moving around. But the two important pieces of your body where your blood is at at all times is either going to be in your lungs or in your liver. In your lungs, amen, to get oxygen, to push on, push things through, or it's in your liver, amen, to clean the things out that's in that blood, amen. Come on, give y'all some praise up in here. I'm having fun up in here, y'all. Hallelujah. The life is in the blood. Secondly, the blood not only carries oxygen and food to us, watch this, but the blood carries carbon dioxide and waste out of the body, out of the body. And I got that point, Sambu, you could put that up there so they could see it. Hallelujah. The blood, hallelujah, just follow the points for a second. The blood carries carbon dioxide and waste out of the body. So the blood not only put things in, but it carries things out. Hallelujah. If carbon dioxide and certain waste would stay in your body, then cells would die. Tissue would die. Organs would fail. And that's why, amen, they began to amputate some of our people, like even my father, because the blood wasn't getting there. And if the blood's not getting there, not only is it not receiving oxygen and food, but waste is staying there. And the body begins to decay. The body begins to die. So instead of it die and just be continue to eat up, what they do, they amputate. Amen. Hallelujah. To keep the, that, 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 that limb, amen, uh, the farthest portion of it, the limb where the blood is still traveling. Amen. They don't want death in your body. Amen. And so the blood, hallelujah, carries carbon dioxide and waste out of your body. When the oxygen is taken from the lungs and put into the blood, huh? something else is happening at the same time, probably right before the red blood cells come in with the empty uh, uh, luggage to get oxygen, huh? right before they come with the empty luggage. They come in with luggages that's full huh? to the lungs. And that luggage is full, amen, of carbon dioxide, because it go to the, the, the cells and the tissues and the organs. It not only drop off oxygen, but it pick up carbon dioxide. And so it's moving stuff that the body don't need. It's, it's, it, it pull up to the, to the door and say, I got a shipment, and, and they drop the shipment off. They say, but hold on, hallelujah, I, I'm going to take this, but can you bring this back to the lungs? And so it's bringing carbon dioxide back. Isn't that a miracle? And they think that, they say we evolved. They say we just happened. They say that nature, Mother Nature created us. It was the Most High who created us. Woo! I'm excited this morning. So them little blood cells, little blood cells, microscopic, the little blood cells, they come through and they coming back to the lungs. It's a gas exchange. They coming back with a, to the lungs with luggage full of carbon dioxide and other gaseous waste. I told you when we inhale, they dropping off uh, oxygen into the cells. Guess what? When we exhale, <laughs> the little blood cells come. They release the carbon dioxide. They release ammonia, some different, different things that they pick up in the body. And when, when they release that into the lungs, that's when we go, <sighs> and all that carbon dioxide come out. Isn't that a miracle? It's a, you a walking miracle. And we just talking about your blood this morning. That's all we talking about. Where is the life at? In the blood. In the blood. It drops off, hallelujah, carbon dioxide and waste. Amen. Let's keep going. The blood also protects against wounds and microorganisms. By wounds, I mean cuts. It not only delivers oxygen and food, it not only gets waste out of our body, but it also protects against wounds and, and, and microorganisms. When we get a cut or a wound, the blood has uh, some little round flat objects called platelets. In school, that's how I remember them. They flat plates. You understand what I'm saying? Plates. They would eat out of platelets. Huh? These platelets, huh? 
when a break in the bloodstream happens because the blood is traveling and there's no break in it. The blood is just, it's moving. But when there's a break in the system and any of the tubes and, and blood is coming out, an alarm goes off in the bloodstream. The blood begins to say, there's a cut, there's a break. We losing blood, it's an emergency. There's a little group in the blood besides the red blood cells called platelets. And platelets job is when there's a cut, they begin to all gather by the cut. They not only gather by the cut, but they release chemicals and different things to allow a traffic jam to happen. Red blood cells, right blood cells, platelets begin to jam up that place, plug up that place where the blood was coming out. The blood's coming out, the platelets come. They say, no, we can't have this. Jam it up, jam it up, jam it up, jam it up. That jamming up is called coagulation. Is the reason why when we get a cut, we don't bleed out. Isn't that a miracle? That our body on the inside, without us even thinking about it, when it's a cut, it heals itself. Come on, give y'all some praise up in here. Woo! And you mad at that scab? You mad at that scar? That scab stopped the blood from pouring out. Stop the blood. Huh? If we didn't have places, if we didn't have that blood, we wouldn't be alive long. Every cut would be fatal. All right? And it's life that's in the blood. The blood does not only, hallelujah, uh, 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 heal cuts and wounds, but it also has something in it that deals with foreign invaders, microorganisms, bacteria, germs, microscopic invaders that can come in and make us sick. Sick even to the point of death, huh? For the longest times before modern medicine done, done messed up the medical field, messed up, uh, and, and they got superbugs now, <laughs> you know, for, for the longest, amen, our own antibodies, ooh, come on, somebody, would take care of us. And it still take care of us, amen, but they done messed a lot of things up, uh huh, if you hear what I'm saying. Well, in the blood, we got something. We not only have red blood cells, we got what? We got white blood cells. Those white blood cells are the policemen of the blood. They walk around there arresting, eating, punching, knocking out any foreign invaders. They the wolf pack of the bloodstream. Anybody hear me up in here? They got a bear in your bloodstream. They got a kip in your bloodstream. They got a Joseph Gray point that you don't belong here in your bloodstream. Huh? That's the white blood cells. Any foreign invaders. And let me tell you something. If we didn't have it, you wouldn't have the long life that you have this morning. Because everywhere we go is germs, bacteria. Everywhere we go, there's sickness lying around the corner. Everything we touch, we pick up things, we drink, we eat things, amen. And there's all kind of stuff that's in there. And I'm not trying to get you all OCD to be looking at everything. Because God put a system in that to look for you, to look, to look at those things for you. Come on, give y'all some praise. Amen. That system is in the blood. The white blood cells will see something that don't belong there and put out an alert. Other white blood cells come rush to the situation. And like I say, they take care of business. And if you never saw the wolf pack jump on somebody, hey, God. That's how the white blood cells jump on people. I done seen them carry them out, they feet not touch the ground. You understand what I'm saying? And that's what the white blood cells do. So that's what God was trying to say 3,000 years ago through Moses. That's what he was telling. And that's what he was saying that the Europeans didn't pick up until 1657. That is life. And life is found where? In the blood. And just for a moment, amen, all this blood, how does it get to where it's going? How does it get to uh, uh, those extremities, those limbs, all the way down to your fingertips to give food, to give oxygen, to take care of waste, to bring carbon dioxide out, to make sure no sickness, no disease? How does the blood get there? Huh? There's a little muscle in your chest about the size of of your hand, two hands that's clasped. Anybody know what that muscle called? The heart. And God put that muscle in there. He put that heart in there. 
And the moment, amen, you conceive, amen, still in your mama's womb, that heart begins to beat. Even before your birthday, that heart is beating. And that heart's job is to pump that blood. Ooh, you understand what I'm talking about? And that heart is pumping that blood. That heart squeezes and blood comes out and shoots to where it's got to go. That heart opens up and blood rushes in. Hey, God, you understand what I'm saying? That squeezing out, I might pronounce, mispronounce this Doc, yeah, doctors, uh, uh, systolic. That squeezing out is systolic. That opening is diastolic. How y'all say it? Diastolic. Like apostolic. Diastolic. <laughs> Got to put it in spiritual terms. <laughs> All right. So how we say the first one? Systolic. The second one? Apostolic. Diastolic. <laughs> so when it beats... Check your heartbeat out. Boom, systolic. Boom, diastolic. Boom, systolic. Boom, diastolic. And that's what it's doing. And it's doing that all day long, because that and, and it's pumping that blood, moving that blood where it needs to go. And it's such a beautiful system. Because when that blood get oxygen, it turn red. Mm. When it delivered, it turned a darker color. Some would say like a violet, like a blue, like a blue color. And the body just doing this thing on its own. It said that this little heart in our bodies pumps 2,000 gallons of blood per day throughout your system. 2,000 gallons. That little thing he put in our chest. You ain't got no recharge battery. You ain't got, you ain't got to open that thing up, take it out, plug it up. He starts that thing, like I say, while you're in your mama womb. And think about how old are you now. Think about that. It makes me kind of get scared. Listen, <laughs> I'm turning 47 tomorrow. And for 47 years, that thing, muscle, been, look, working, huh? Since God done blew the breath of life into, oh, my God. Isn't he amazing? And every day is pumping 2,000 gallons per day. They said that the average heart will beat 100,000 times every 24-hour period. 100, don't, don't think about it too much because you went, don't stop, don't stop. <laughs> you ain't got to worry about that. God's got you. God's got you. He controls the beat of your heart. He's got that. See, we don't think about things deeply so we forget about God. You see? But it's him that's moving that. It's him that's moving that. And I want our youngsters to think about that. How could that just evolve? How something so meticulously designed could just evolve like that? There is no possible way. That's like that camera just evolving. That's like, hallelujah, these lights. We walking around and we just find a light that just evolved. Those things don't just happen. Somebody created it. Come on, give y'all some praise up in here. It's demonic lies. Come on, we almost done. Every cell, through the 2,000 gallons that's being pumped every day, every cell gets that blood from the heart. Now, it moves through not only just the heart, but it moves through a system, a system of highways and byways, uh, veins and vessels. Um, we impressed by the American highway system. But in our body, uh, uh, they tell us that we have 60,000 miles of blood vessels. So that heart is pumping that blood. through. If we had to take it all out and unravel you with all the veins and the blood vessels, it would be 60,000 miles. You'd be able to put it all over the earth, they say, In every single person, that heart is making sure that blood travels what, 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 we, what we would equate to 60,000 miles. And it's pumping it. And it's going. And it's not only getting it there, it's getting it there in the time that it needs to get there. And not too fast and not too slow. 
Because the blood got to get that slow enough to drop things off. Y'all ain't ready for this. <laughs> it's got to get to the place slow enough so every organ, every cell can drop by like Piccadilly and pick off what it needs. That's what we call the capillaries as the blood moves through. Come on, Doc, we listen. And it's dropping off stuff. Huh? And your muscles, your biceps taking what it needs. Your legs, your, tri your triceps, your legs taking what it needs. Everything taking what it needs from the blood. He says life is in where? It's in the blood. It's in the blood. Hallelujah. Y'all cutting up first lady? I won't laugh. Wait, I'm not saying all that. I'm not saying all that. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm a spiritual teacher. I'm a spiritual teacher. <laughs> so that's how important the blood is, Fontenay. Now let's talk about, before we get off here, amen, how, how, what do we need to do to take care of our blood? Because if it's that important, why are we not really taking care of it like we should? You know? Because there are some things that we could do to help the system operate at optimal level, all right? First thing we need to do, back on it, we need to exercise. We need to exercise. Come on, Sam Boo, where y'all at? Put that up there. We need to exercise, all right? And it said that we need to exercise, y'all, like 30 minutes a day. And, and, and listen, work, especially for the men, work is not exercise. Say that with me. Work is not exercise. That's not exercise. You ain't, you, ain't, you ain't getting that blood moving. And while me and First Lady was talking about this, hallelujah, there you go, man. I said, what's happening? While me and First Lady was talking about this, she told me, we was looking at the scripture, she said, we got we to gotta keep that blood moving. See, movement is life. When something moves, it's living. And the things in it is living. We could take a stream that's been there for 20 years and you could drink out of it. But you take a, 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 a bowl of water and set it out for 20 years, you better not drink out of that. <laughs> what I'm saying is your blood not moving enough. It's exercise that's going to get that heart pumping, keep it healthy, and get that blood moving. And, and uh, 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 they tell us that, that 30 minutes a day could be walking, it could be running, it could be biking mixed in with some stretching. And if you love your spouse this morning, ain't nothing better for you to just bump them and say, listen, let's go walk today. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And, and listen, you got, if you got, listen, let's go talk. Let's go, well, let's talk. Let's sit on the couch. No, no, we're going to talk while we walk around the neighborhood. <laughs> you know? And you got to tell that man of God. And, and women of God, listen, I'm going to put it on y'all. Tell your loved one. Tell your spouse. Come on, honey. Because men, all we want to do is work. All we want to do is provide. And that's why most of the time, especially in the black families, it be the men that go first. They ain't doing much. Woman of God, you got to get that man, hallelujah, moving them legs. Come on, give y'all some praise. Amen. <laughs> hallelujah. Or you going to be pushing them around if you don't. All right. I know you already push them around, but in a different way, you know, all right? And so you got you to gotta exercise. I'm doing good on time, pretty? Got to exercise. Uh, uh, now, one thing that, that blessed me was that I found, like, like, sports that I still like to do, all right? And for a man of God, this is a good message for you, and even for the women of God. If you could find something that you like to do. Because sometimes just walking or just running for no reason. Y'all used to run from the cops. Y'all used to run when you stole something out the store. <laughs> Lost prevention chasing y'all. That was how you got your exercise. But, but you're saved now. So you ain't running from the uh, uh, police no more. So you got to find something fun to walk or run for. And so go back to those sports you used to do. All right? Go back to, to, to like, like, like me. Shooting a little basketball. Now, you're going to have to come to the realization that you're not going to be what you was. That's why people don't play. They expect and they get out there and it's harder. And they're like, oh, I don't I quit. Quit. You ain't ran for 25 years. And you expect to get back on that and dunk? You know what I'm saying? That's not going to happen. 
humble yourself and get a realization. I'm not as young as I used to be, and I'm not going to be able to do exactly what I used to do. But I'm going to be able to keep it moving, though. Come on, give y'all some praise, huh? Keep it moving. You just keep it moving. You, you Listen, that's what I do on a basketball court. Just keep it moving. Every now and then I might get a little shot there, and I'm happy for that. I come home talk about that for 30 minutes. Babe, you should have saw. How many you made? One. <laughs> I'm just playing. But you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, and, and, and so, so I found basketball. Others in here, amen, might get a love. Me and Brian talk about it all the time. Might get a love for some type of self-defense. You might want to listen. Because I, I don't know about you, but when I was growing up, we always didn't have money for everything. Huh? You go to them, mom, I want to do I ain't got no money for that. All right? Mom, I want to breathe. I ain't got no money for, to breathe. Well, you know how much breath costs around here? <laughs> Couldn't do nothing. All right? So you, you, you're grown now. You can afford some things. You always wanted to do karate. Baby, do karate. Mr. Miyagi, wax on, wax off. You, listen, you, you could do this now, but guess what it's going to be doing? Moving your body. You know, me and Brian love that box. We love to watch it. We love to, we love to, and so what? What we do? Go ahead, get you, go get up some classes. And you are that, huh, 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 huh. And guess what's moving? Your blood is moving. They, hit, they say that that pickleball is on fire right now. Huh? That pickleball is all over. I first saw it in Atlanta. We were in Atlanta. We were riding around. And we saw them people with them little tennis rackets. They look small like that. And they, uh, uh, uh. And guess what? What's moving? Their blood is moving. Huh? Whatever it is, find you something that you like to do and do it and keep that blood moving. Come on, give y'all some praise up in here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Exercise to keep the blood right. Eating to keep the blood right. All right? You got to eat with your blood in mind. Now, I would like to show y'all this list up here of foods to make it quick. Y'all could put it up there. Now, we in Louisiana, so we love some cayenne pepper. We put it in our Kool-Aid. We put it in everything. <laughs> in fact, I got some on me right now. We just... We just love it. We love it. I know that a lot of people in a lot of different cities, they get seasonal where they got everything in it. We got that too. But right next to seasonal, right next to Tony Sachin, we, all, we got our cayenne. Because the seasonal don't put enough cayenne. Come on, because San School is now, you got to add that red. All right? Now, the good ones, they don't even have to put it in the cap. They just shake the whole bottle over there. All right? First lady just made some chicken last night. Boy, she had put that cayenne on there. Hallelujah. It was hot, but it was good for the blood. Come on, give y'all some praise up in here. Pomegranates, which is in our land originally, in Israel. Very good for the blood. Very good for the blood. Beets. Very good for the blood. Now, now watch this. Hallelujah. Ha watch this. Hallelujah. Renata, check this out. You know a lot of this stuff because you and Kip. You and Kip probably can come up here and teach us more about some of these things. You talk to Kip, amen. Kip sounds like a physician. I tell Kip all the time, you should, Kip, just go to medical school, Kip. Just, he be pulling out big words on him. I said, hold, hold, hold up now, hold up. Come here trying to intimidate me. You know what I'm saying? But prophet, prophet, deacon, deacon Kip, watch this. Everything that's good for the blood, most of the time, God going to make it red. The color we need is going to correlate with the food that we should be eating. So if you're having problems with the blood, hallelujah, and first lady, she, she good at this. In the mornings, she come there with an old thing of beet juice. And she up there down, she downstairs happy. All right, I got y'all beet juice. We like, oh, God, oh, Lord. Come on, drink it up, drink it up, drink it up, drink it up, drink it up. So we down there. Or, I don't know who the worst one that drink the beet juice. Who it is, babe? Who the one that? that? Um, maybe Annalise. Maybe Annalise? No, Omar do good with it. Omar do good with it. All right. That beet juice, let me tell you something. So I try to get it down as fast as I can. But sometimes it's better to drink it than to eat it. 
So if you can't now, it, that just depends on your makeup, all right? Because me, I, you know, yeah, I just, I guess that's back in my unsaved days. I just, you know, so I can still drink beet juice and just, you know, just, it's all good. I tell y'all too much information right there. But so beet juice, turmeric is another thing. Fish, I don't know why black people don't eat fish. We eat shrimp, but we don't eat fish like we're supposed to. But fish got that omega-3 fatty acids in it, which is very good for the blood. Garlic. Garlic is good for the blood. Hallelujah. Uh, Deacon, you was going to say something? Hallelujah. Squeeze fish. How about the uh, fish oil supplement? Ooh. Yeah. Fish oil supplement is great. So if you don't like fish, hallelujah, you get your little supplement. And that's like that for most of these things. I got a little garlic supplement. It's a little gel cap. And boy, I pop that in once, twice, three times a day, amen, to keep my blood straight, and it's good. In fact, hallelujah, we had a meeting about that garlic. It wasn't about the garlic. We talking some legal stuff, but we wound up talking about the garlic, Deacon. He eat raw. Yeah, yo, you told me that. Yeah, he just popped raw garlic in his mouth. He be in Walmart taking a piece of garlic. I'm joking. Yeah, but that's why you still move. That's why you still look good. Come on, give God some glory, amen? Hallelujah. That garlic, man, that garlic is, is so good, man. Huh? Berries, different berries and stuff like that. You'll see the color of them. They look like our blood. It was God saying, listen, put that in the blood. Onions. I know you don't like to look at it in your food. Go ahead and eat that. That's good for the blood. And there's some things that I don't have on here. Huh? That's, that's good for the blood, because like I said, I'm not going to cover everything. I'm painting with some broad strokes, but we not only need to exercise, but we need to include some of these things, amen, uh, in our diet to just be thinking about our blood. Because if we take care of our blood, our blood going to take care of us. Come on, give y'all some praise, amen. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Just a couple of more things. We got to reduce our sodium, our sodium. Salt, amen, because that salt, that salt is not good for the blood. It, 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 it thickens it, and, and you can't, you can't, it, you, you're making your heart work way too hard to get that blood all the way down to your pretty little toenails you just went through. You got too much salt for that heart that's pumping 100,000 times a day to be playing around with your Lay's bag of chips and your salted, you know what I'm saying? And it's just making it work too hard. So we got to stay away from sodium. Now, our people don't read labels. That's our problem. We just eat. We don't read no label. But we got to turn the back of that product over, and it's going to be a word, sodium. With some grams and percentages, we got to read that. If it's high in sodium, we got to really try our best to stay away from it. And it's, it's hallelujah. And it's stuff that got salt in it that you can't even taste. You can't even taste it. A lot of our preserved things and, 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 and canned vegetables, you think you're eating vegetables and it's good and it's canned, hallelujah. And you look back there and they don't use that salt to preserve it. So you, you're poking beans, you know, you, you mean, but your beans and, you know, and all, and all that. You look on the back of that, that's sodium at 20%. When it's at 20, that means that that's 20% of the sodium that you should be eating. And that's only for the serving. But you ain't putting just a, you know, just a cup. Just a, you ain't doing that. By the time you fix your food, you got a whole day so serving in that one plate. What it's telling you is you done ate the amount of salt that you should be eating in that one meal for the whole day. But you ain't stopping there. All right? So by the time you go to bed, that sodium is high. You wake up, you got a headache every time you wake up. Eyes red. We got people that be fighting, going to the doctor all the time. I got a headache. Why I can't get rid of this headache? Get rid of them chips. Get rid of that sodium. Get rid of that salt. Read the back of those labels. All right? All right, I better get off my high horse right here. Amen. Because I'm going to get to one that's going to affect me. Reduce the sugar. Ooh. Okay, y'all got that one. Let's move on. How many people like them sweets? 
Well, salt not only thickens your blood, but sugar does too. Think about that Kool-Aid y'all used to drink. You didn't pour that Kool-Aid. That Kool-Aid had crap out of that. Look. And then it would get in the bowl. It would... <laughs> that was jello you was drinking, not Kool-Aid. You had to chew that Kool-Aid. Like, hmm, that's good. It's too thick. And so just as an illustration, sugar has, the effect, has a thickening effect as well. And it's making that heart plump. And I don't know about y'all. I love cookies, y'all. And after every meal, it seemed like my mouth is not right until I get something sweet in it. You know what I'm saying? And so y'all pray for me while I pray for y'all. And, and we're going to try to reduce that sugar intake. The way our bodies work is that some people can have more salt and some people can have more sugar. Amen? And so we just got to be careful with that. Let me see what else to help our bloods. Doing our best to reduce alcohol, and reduce smoking. I put reduce to be nice. But you, you, you really shouldn't be messing with it at all, you know, uh, especially as the people of God. I'm trying not to be legalistic with y'all because you can always argue the Bible and be like, pastor, but this and pastor, but that. I understand that. But what we can agree on is that it's not good for your blood. It's not good for your blood. Hallelujah. And when you drink and when you smoke, certain things about your blood can't operate like you're supposed to operate. All right? Quickly. We need to put some sleep. We got to get us some sleep, y'all. And I know y'all tired. I woke y'all up early this morning. Hallelujah. But hopefully, amen, after tabernacles, you get you some good sleep. That's going to help the blood. Before I leave that little sub point and get to my last, last, last point, um, God thought that sleep was so important that he put it in the Ten Commandments. He put rest in the Ten Commandments. He gave us a whole day to rest, the Sabbath day, and he said, remember it. Now, I'm no Sabbatarian by any stretch of the imagination. I'm not going to be beating you over the head about the, the Sabbath and about the law because personally, I think they got the wrong day anyway that they're tripping over, and that's number one. They don't know the observation, and it's, it's simple to me. And I look at that and I say, boy, y'all not even on the seventh day anyway. Y'all on Sunday, y'all on Saturday, all right? But beyond arguing about days, you should have a day of rest. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? And you should get, hallelujah, them seven Eight hours, somebody saying 10, Pastor, no, seven, eight hours of sleep. You should be getting that. And when you don't, try to make up for it with a little nap. You understand what I'm saying? During your, during, during your evening news, you see how you, your body be wanting to sleep by itself? Yes. It's telling you something. I need a little bit more rest. Because when you resting and I ain't got to worry about muscles moving, I can move this blood and get the muscles what it need. Come on, give y'all some praise. Come on now, somebody. Hallelujah. The last thing, amen, and it was, it was told to me by, by hallelujah, uh, one of the nurses that, 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 that uh, was in the house um, that is good taking care of your blood to always monitor your blood yourself. Have your blood pressure machine, right? For those that have trouble with, with the sugar content, go ahead and, and check your sugar. Amen. That's just a little prick, amen, of the finger. Uh, uh, you'll know uh, uh, what you need, but you got to monitor that blood. And so wherever we are, whether it's in Atlanta, whether it's in Lafayette, amen, we got little machines that we, that we, that we monitor our blood pressure because ain't nothing worse than feeling bad and not knowing the reason why you're feeling bad. All right? Um, um, they often say you got to know your numbers. And when you begin to know your numbers, you'll, you'll be able to associate how you feel to your numbers. Oh, y'all ain't ready for this. You ain't ready for this. Because you're going to look at the numbers, oh, it's high. When it's high, this is how I feel. I got a little headache. My eye's not working correctly. I feel a little bit groggy, feel off balance. All right, that's the feeling I get. And sometimes you get so good, you ain't going to even have to check your number. You'll be in a place and say, hold on, hold on, hold on. I done had enough salt because that blood pressure is high. 
I had enough little debits, enough cookies. I ate two rolls of that pack of cookies. You had two rolls. That's what some people do. Not people I know, but some people. You see what I'm saying? I ate two rolls and a pack of cookies. That's enough. All right? Because of the feeling. Now, y'all, what have we talked about? We've talked about Leviticus 17, 11. We've talked about the life of the flesh. Is where? It's in the blood. We talked about how important that blood is, but we also talked about how you need to take care of that blood. Just don't take it and just let it go over your head. Let's try to apply this. Because what this system don't want is us getting back to our optimal health. They don't want us getting back to our optimal health. They don't want us to live 90, 100 years, 110 years like we, oh, y'all ain't ready for that. They don't want us to live like that no more. And we not only live that way, but look good living that way. All right? They don't want that no more. All right? Because if we can live long, we can influence more. We can bring God more to our communities, amen, to our families, amen, and to our churches. Now, before we leave, amen, you know I never like to leave without talking about the most important attribute of the blood. And I want you to think about that for a second. You see how all the things the blood do in the body? Now, think about how God chose the blood, not only to keep you alive in your body, huh, but to keep you alive in regards to your soul. Because it's with the blood that God chose. Put that in Leviticus 17, 11. He, he chose with the blood to make an atonement for our souls. I don't know about you, but I'm glad about the blood this morning. <laughs> Amen. I'm so glad about the blood this morning. And what blood I'm talking about? I'm talking about the blood of Jesus. Huh? God said, I can't. Cleanse your sin with something that's not important. It's got to be important for me to cleanse your sin with. And so he chose blood, and not only just any blood, he chose the blood of his only begotten son. And if you're here this morning and you're not saved, amen, I know you like the health talk, amen, but it ain't no good for you to live 100 years, and after you live 100 years, the bus hell wide open, amen. Make sure you're healthy in body, but also in soul. The way to be saved is easy. You admit that you're a sinner. You believe in Yahshua Jesus, his death, his burial, his resurrection. Put your faith in his blood, his blood-stained cross, and then you call upon him. And the Bible says, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's salvation easy. Life is in the blood. Come on, give y'all some praise up in here. Amen. Amen. I'm going to pray with you, and we're going to get out of here. Say, Most High God, Most high God. Thank, you thank you for the blood, for the, blood. the blood that's running, the blood that's running. Through, my through my veins and the blood, and the blood. that was shared, the shared on the cross. I admit, I admit. I've, sinned, I've sinned, but I believe, but I believe. That, Jesus that Jesus died. For all those sins. I believe he was buried. And I believe he rose. Most high. Save me. A sinner. Through your blood. And use me. To awaken. My people. Give me good health. Long life. Teach me. How to take care. The temple that you have given me. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Come on, give y'all some praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. First lady gonna come up and tell us what we have to do next. Let me just take this off. Wasn't that good, y'all? That was very informative. And I'm like, wow, God is amazing. All of the blood, six, did you say 60,000? That's what he said? That's crazy going on. At, and this is the thing that I thought. It's happening involuntarily. 
Like we're not doing anything for it to happen. So that's amazing. I'm not going to keep you guys. So we have two classes. They'll start at 1045. If you want to take a little bathroom break and go out in the foyer for the vendors, the two classes are restoration of Hebrew health. That'll be in here restoration of Hebrew health and the next class will be in the fellowship hall if you go out in the corridor and make a right um, that one is called healthy habits for God's glory uh, again it's restoration of Hebrew health if you need to restore some things in in here and um, healthy habits if you want to learn how to eat and um, exercise and whatnot a little bit more detailed will we'll be out in the foyer again that's going to start at 10 45 so we have about a 10 minute break guys I think that's about it. If you want to come to the Hat Brunch and you missed um, the tickets, we have two free tickets. I'll hang out by the door if you guys want to attend. All right, say two. All right, thank you guys. Appreciate it. <laughs>